In this video I'm showing how I replaced a failed hard drive in an Xbox One console. I'm going to start by removing the plastics. To do that we just need to go to the side that has the pairing button and the USB port. I gently pried up on this vent with a screwdriver to remove it. And then remove the small piece of plastic that's underneath of the pairing button. At the time of making this video, this console is almost 10 years old, so your warranty's probably done anyways. Just go ahead and make it official. If you press down on the top half of the plastics here, you can see it creates this separation where the case comes together. I'm just going to use that separation to get started with a screwdriver and then work my way across the back and pry it gently to pop the tabs loose. and then lift up gently here until the front panel lets go. You want to be careful with this step though because there is a really small ribbon cable that connects the front panel. Rather than messing with that ribbon cable, I prefer to just disconnect the front panel from the top plastics. To do that, you can just go along the front here with either your finger or a screwdriver and press down on each of these tabs until the plastics come apart. And this is just a quick shot here of the ribbon cable in the front. We just have to be careful with this step so we don't damage this guy. Alright, so the next step is to remove some screws. The screws that we want to remove each have a C and a number beside of them. And you'll use a Torx T9 bit for these. There are seven screws that are visible here, so I'll start by getting all of those removed. Next I'm going to remove the speaker. This just snaps into the metal case. The antenna from the wireless card is also connected to the metal case, so I'm just going to disconnect that as well and then disconnect the antenna from the wireless card and remove these two screws that hold the wireless card in place. These screws are slightly smaller and use a T7 bit. Once they're out, you can gently lift up on the wireless card to remove it and then that'll reveal the final case screw. Take that last screw out and then we're ready to get into the case. You can lift up the top metal cover at this point, but the cable for the wireless card is still connected to the motherboard. You can gently pull directly up on this cable and the connector should come loose so that you can set the top cover aside. Alright, so now that we're into the meat of it, we can do the exciting parts. This is just a standard SATA hard drive like you'd find in a computer. We just have to pull directly up on the SATA data and power cables to disconnect them from the motherboard. And then the tray that the hard drive sets in comes right out. Here's a close-up of the hard drive. We actually have to take it out of the tray to remove this connector. That can be done by removing the four Torx screws on the underside of the tray. There's only three screws in this one, probably because some idiot took this one apart before and didn't put it back together right. With the hard drive out of the tray, you can just pull on this connector to remove it. Alright, so a quick word of caution on selecting a replacement hard drive. This 500 gig Seagate drive is the original drive that came in the Xbox. Solid state drives can come in slightly odd sizes, so don't be like me and get on Amazon and see a 480 gigabyte drive and think, eh, that's close enough. Who's going to miss 20 gigs? When I installed this drive and tried to perform the offline system update, I couldn't get past this E101 error. And no matter what I did, I could not get past this error, and I eventually found some posts on a forum that said that the drive has to be at least 500 gigs or larger for the Xbox to accept it. So this 480 gig drive went into the spares pile, and I instead used this 1 terabyte solid state drive from Crucial, and I'll leave a link to this one in the description since this one worked for me. To get the drive formatted for the Xbox, we need to connect it to a PC first. I used this Sabrent SATA to USB 3.0 adapter to do this, and I'll leave a link to this down in the description as well. In case you've never used one of these before, it's a pretty simple adapter. It just has the SATA power and data connectors on one end, and then the other end is just a USB plug. I just connected the SATA end to my new solid state drive, and then connected the USB port to my desktop. I'll do a demonstration here on how to prepare the drive using Windows 10, but these steps should be similar across pretty much all versions of Windows. On the keyboard, hold down the Windows key and hit R to pull up the run prompt. And the run prompt, type in CMD and then hit enter. In the command prompt, type in disk part and hit enter. This should open up a new window that we can run some commands in. First, type in list disk and then hit enter. The output of this command will show all of the disks that are connected to your computer. In my case, I just have my C drive, which is disk zero. And then I have the replacement drive for the Xbox, which is disk one. What you see here could vary slightly depending on your computer, but in most cases, your C drive should be disk zero and the new Xbox hard drive should be disk one. Since disk 1 is the drive that I want to configure, the first command that I'll run is select disk 1, then run the command clean. This will erase anything that's on the drive, but since it's brand new, it's no big deal. The next command is create part prime, then run select part 1, and type in format fs equals ntfs quick, and then hit enter. 
This command took several seconds to complete, and the progress was stuck at 0% until it finished and jumped all the way to 100%, but the activity light on the adapter was blinking the whole time, so just be patient and let it do its thing. Once the format was finished, I ran the command assign and hit enter. This assigns the drive a letter, you can see it popped up here as my D drive, and it shows that it has just over 900 gigs of free space. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and type exit in the disk part window. We're done configuring the new drive, so it's ready to go in the Xbox now, so I can go ahead and disconnect it from the USB adapter, and then connect it to the SATA adapter for the Xbox. The next step is to put the replacement drive into the tray, and then put all the screws back in place. I actually ended up finding the one that was missing, so I have all four now. Now we're ready to start putting everything back together. I put the drive tray back in, and reconnected the SATA data and power cables. I reconnected the cable for the wireless card to the motherboard. And then laid the top cover back in place. I put this corner screw in first and tightened it down, so that I could then reconnect the wireless card and put the screws back in that hold it in place. At this point I went ahead and put all of the other long case screws back in and tightened them down. I snapped the speaker back into the top cover and reconnected the antenna wire to the wireless card. I also reconnected the little cable management clips that hold the antenna in place on the top cover. Then I lowered the top plastics back on and snapped them into place. Then I pressed the front panel back into place so that the tabs would all snap together. And lastly, back where we began on the side with the pairing button, I slid this small triangle shaped piece of plastic back into place, and then I put the vent that we first removed back on. Alright, so the next step here is that you're going to need a USB drive. I use this 16 gigabyte SanDisk Cruiser. I'll leave a link to this one in the description in case you want to use the same one, but it's just a USB drive, so as long as it has enough space, you can use any kind. I connected the drive to a USB port on my computer. Then I opened up File Explorer and went to This PC on the left-hand navigation. I right-clicked on the USB drive and selected Format. For the Xbox to recognize the drive, it has to be formatted as NTFS, so make sure that you use this option. Make sure that Quick Format is selected and then click Start. This will erase everything on the USB drive, so if there's anything important, make sure you copy it off first. If you're good to go, just click on OK. You should get a message that the format was complete. You can say OK and close this window. Alright, so the next step is that we have to open up an internet browser and search for Xbox One Offline System Update. This first result from support.xbox.com is the one we want, and at this point honestly Microsoft's instructions are kind of garbage and vague. There are three different versions of the offline system update that are available, versions 1, 2, and 3. Honestly, since the instructions on this page were so bad, I just started with OSU 1. That worked fine for me, so if you're doing something similar and replacing a failed hard drive, I would suggest starting with OSU 1 as well. Just click on one of the links for OSU 1 to start the download. It's just over 6 gigabytes in size, so it takes a few minutes. I'll go ahead and pause the video while this downloads, and then pick it up again when it's finished. Alright, so now that it's done, we want to go ahead and go to the Downloads folder. Right-click on the osu1.zip folder here and select Extract All. I'm just going to leave this to defaults and extract the files to this directory that it filled in here. So just click on Extract. This part could also take a minute depending on how fast your computer is. I'll pause again here and pick it back up when it's done. Alright, so when the file extract finishes, it should automatically bring you to a window in the osu1 folder. We just want to right-click and copy this $SystemUpdate folder and then browse back to your USB drive and then right click and paste to start copying the folder over. This part also takes a few minutes, so again I'll pause and resume when it's done. Alright, so the file transfer is finished here, so we can go ahead and right click on the USB and select eject. Then it's safe to remove it from your computer and connect it to one of the USB ports on the Xbox. I have the Xbox reconnected to the power and the TV and everything, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on now. Whenever it wakes up, it's still probably going to be kind of fussy, so go ahead and select troubleshoot. If the Xbox recognizes the USB drive, then Offline System Update should be selectable, so go ahead and arrow over to that and hit A. At this point you should see something kind of similar to this. The console kind of goes on autopilot for several minutes while it copies the files over from the USB to the newly installed drive. I'll go ahead and speed this up as well. During this phase, the screen might go black and the Xbox might reboot a few times, but there's not really any input required on our part until the very tail end where you make it to this press the A button screen. From this point it's kind of the standard out of the box setup questions, English, United States, Wi-Fi network, Microsoft account. After a few more questions where I can only assume we're consenting that Microsoft can auction off our kidneys to the highest bidder, 
We finally make it to the familiar Xbox home screen, and at this point my friends breathe a sigh of relief, we are finally done. Since replacing the failed drive, I've been able to play hours and hours of games on this thing, so these steps work for me, I hope they work for you as well. Hit the like button if this helped you out, and thanks for watching.